The Other Fellow, which is a documentary in cinemas. The title is taken from a line delivered by George Lazenby in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Your favourite Bond film? Yes, although I think, as you know, everyone can agree, probably not the best Bond. But George Lazenby says, this never happened to the other fellow. The joke being that he was not the first person to be called James Bond. Ah. I mean, in fact, of course, Sean Connery wasn't the first person to ever portray James Bond because there's a television show with the Jimmy Bond thing and then there's a radio thing beforehand. But the reference is, it's a joke about the fact that George Lazenby is taken it, over. Well, Stuart McConey, wasn't it? He was the first. Stuart McConey yeah, was the first James Bond so. and I think Bob Holness before him, yeah. who played the saxophone solo on... Uh, Live and Let Die. No, Baker Street. I know, I was trying to... No, no, okay, fine, very, very good. So... This is a documentary by Matthew Bauer in which we meet a load of people who are James Bond, in name at least. There's a theatre director, a lawyer, a retired oilman, a pastor, a computer programmer, um, an inmate, a helicopter pilot. We are told that half of the world's population have seen a Bond film. And we hear, imagine if you're called James Bond. Yes. And imagine, therefore, hearing the same joke every day of your life. You know, how are you feeling? Shaken, not stirred. It's a blessing and a curse. And we also hear how Ian Fleming chose the name James Bond, particularly because he thought it was unremarkable and he nicked it from a very specific source. Here's a clip. Mr. Fleming, how does an author tackle the problem of selecting a name for the hero of his stories? When I started to write these books in 1952... I wanted a really flat, quiet name. And one of my Bibles out here is uh, James Bond's Birds of the West Indies. And I thought, well, now, James Bond, now, that's a pretty quiet name. And so I simply stole it and used it. What we then discover is that apparently James Bond, who wrote the book about Birds of the West Indies, wasn't thrilled about the fact that his name was then taken and used as the most famous super spy in the world because he was James Bond and suddenly and he's a you know he was a a, 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 a quiet man who was interested in in bird life and so we see this correspondence between James Bond's wife who writes to Ian Fleming and says you have stolen my husband's name and you have ruined his life and you are a scoundrel and how dare you and Ian Fleming bless him, writes back and says, I, I, I stand accused and I, I have no defence at all. It was indeed, I, I should have, you know, the only thing I can offer you in return is I offer you the full use of the name Ian Fleming and you may name the most horrible bird that you ever discover after it. So that story is a kind of nice little autobiographical thing. But going on around the rest of this, we hear stories of people called James Bond. We meet two people from South Bend's Indiana, I think, who both called James Bond, whose paths crossed when one of them became the subject of a murder investigation. We meet a support group for people, all of whom are called James Bond, and get together to discuss what it's like. We meet someone who couldn't stick being called James Bond and change their name to something else because they were fed up with people saying, are you shaken, not stirred? We meet a Swedish guy who was abandoned by his father when he was young and who adopted the name James Bond and indeed the personality James Bond in order to find the security in his life that he never had and who declares that Ian Fleming is, as far as he's concerned, his spiritual father. And then most bizarrely, and I won't kind of go into detail about this because you should see the documentary, we meet a woman who is who had an abusive partner who uses the name James Bond as a way of escaping an absolutely, apparently inescapable situation. It's an odd little doc, and I must say that when I started watching it, it was like this is an entire documentary about people called James Bond. I mean, how can how is this possibly going to fill a feature length film? And it is true that it it stretches the idea about as far as it will go, but there are enough interesting stories in there to more than keep your attention gripped. Particularly this one central story. Which, when it's introduced, you think, "Where is where is this going? Why is this is almost like I've changed channels? Why is why is this happening?" And of course, it's fascinating because, I mean, I changed my name, as you know. I mean, you know, I was when I was a child, I was Mark Ferry. When I was uh, later on, I became Mark Kermode because my parents uh, divorced, and I took my mother's uh, maiden name. 
And, uh, you know, it's many people I know have changed their names. It's just a thing that, that happens. But it's very interesting that it's, these aren't only people who change their name from James Bond, but people who change their name to James Bond in a, and what the name means and what it means that when you Google search James Bond, 68 million mm. things come up. So anyway, it's called The Other Guy and it's, it is uh, The Other Fellow, pardon me, and it is far more interesting than I thought it was going to be. There are some, if you bumped in, if you were introduced to someone and they were called James Bond, you would not let that part. No, no one will. And this is, this is the point that they're making, exactly. is it's impossible for somebody to say, what's your name? Bond. James Bond, it's impossible for them not to yes. go, you know, oh, <laughs> you licensed to kill. When I was on Radio Nottingham back in the 80s, we had an expert, I think he was like a lawyer, or he was on the phone in, you know, he was one of the experts yeah. that you get in, and he was called Rupert Bear. And obviously that doesn't have the international cachet of James Bond, but it's the kind of name that you cannot let pass without some observation. Yes. Or singing Rupert, Rupert the Bear. Everyone knows his name. Anyway, yes. so there are just some... So it sounds quite intriguing. Where do I find that documentary? It, it, it is in cinema. Oh, right. Um, okay. it, it is kind of fascinating. If you've never had a name that absolutely demands that somebody says something when you say it, you... It's... It's an oddity, you know. It is. It, 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 it you, you either you've either had it or you haven't. 